refrigeration and air conditioning part four expansion valve and back pressure valve today i am going to discuss here the construction operation and the purpose as well as the setting of the expansion valve and the purpose of the back pressure valve before moving to the construction of the expansion valve let's see what it serves here this is the basic refrigerant cycle and we already know this one as i have well explained in my previous videos and uh, let's see what is happen what happens in the evaporator evaporator is the main heat transfer uh, equipment that is in the refrigerant system so from the room the surrounding heat is absorbed to the refrigerant uh, to the evaporator so the temperature that we have to maintain in the room is the saturation temperature of the refrigerant as you know these are the okay this is the saturation temperature this right hand side graph shows the temperature against entropic and this side is pure liquid this is the critical point and the right hand side is the pure steam or the gas region and in between this area is the vapor state which means liquid plus gas the combination is uh, present and you can see different pressures it has different saturation temperatures which means different boiling temperatures or different dew points so the pressure it decide what is the saturation temperature so what temperature at the liquid boils that depends on the pressure so if you want to maintain evaporator uh, to maintain uh, the, the temperature of the room so let's say minus 80 that you have to maintain the room temperature at minus 80 so then which means the refrigerant must uh, boil off it should start to deal with its latent heat at minus 80 so there will be corresponding pressure for that particular refrigerant where it maintains minus 80 this latent heat let's say this p2 pressure where that refrigerant maintains minus 18 degree celsius if someone wants to maintain zero degree of the surrounding then it, he has to maintain uh, the phase change or saturation temperature somewhere above the minus 18 let's say this temperature is at zero degree so then what he has to do is he has to increase the pressure from pt p2 to p so in this way if a refrigerant and refrigeration plant is there where common gas is used to cool down different rooms at different temperature so then we need to have different different expansion valves and the evaporators so we can maintain different pressure at the different evaporators so corresponding saturation temperature uh, will vary according depending on the pressure that we are maintaining in the okay so that maintaining the pressure it it is taken care by the expansion pan so the purpose of the expansion valve is then effectively drop the pressure we know the high pressure liquid comes here it pressure drops and maintain the evaporator at a constant pressure so its saturation temperature or boiling temperature should not varies uh, and the evaporator oil must use efficiently and effectively what does it mean let's say in case of incorrect adjustment of expansion valve let's say insufficient refrigerant enters in the evaporator what happens only at the halfway of the evaporator all the refrigerant will get evaporated so the later part of the evaporator will not be useful the same way if the expansion valve opens too much then too much liquid will enter and there will be some remaining liquid particles 
which exit from the evaporator because there won't be complete heat exchange because the flow is too much and there will be a chance where your compressor get a liquid which cause a damage to the compressor right so then what is the normal required to ensure that your operator effectively uh, works in the system and your compressor is safe from the liquid ingress so how it is uh, how it can be uh, ensured let's say now the operator pressure at the operator pressure uh, that we have to maintain at 1.3 bar let's say at 1.3 bar the gas saturation temperature refrigerant temperature is minus 18 minus 8 so if the temperature uh, if the uh, expansion valve is correctly set then what happens what it should be the temperature that you measure at the evaporator outlet it should be minus 80 which means the saturation temperature at this region that latent heat is taken care of, so that we can say it is minus 80 so the gas is somewhere here but the whatever the outlet this but whatever the the mixture comes out it is somewhere here it may be here it may be here it may be here maybe here 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 but we do not want to leave the refrigerant at this condition this condition or this condition because it consists of the vapor still the gas can do some work and there is a probability where this liquid will ingress into your compressor we do not want that so then we have to make sure the thing which comes out from the evaporator must right side of this point so which means we have to make sure that is superheated that is in superheated region then your operator is fully effectively or fully work done it has been done in the evaporator as well as there won't be any chance of ingression of liquid into the evaporator so as a rule of thumb what we are going to say that we preferred the outlet from the evaporator is somewhat 5k superheated 5k superheated what does it mean if the boiling temperature of this refrigerant is minus 18 we would like to have the temperature of the gas somewhere close to uh, minus 18 minus 30 okay. so to increase its temperature by 5 degree then we can say that the leaving the, the evaporator the condition of the gas which are leaving from the evaporator it lies somewhere here okay so now we know the superheating means the difference between the temperature of the refrigerant at the exit of the evaporator and the evaporating temperature evaporating temperature is the minus 18 which means that the temperature that you have to maintain in the room how you can find that one you have to find the temperature and the pressure uh, table or else the compound pressure gauge which shows for different temp, uh, refrigerant types different different saturation temperatures against the pressure so you can use a compound pressure gauge and uh, i will show you that one also this one is the compound pressure gauge so you can see here uh, the outermost circle it is the pressure in psi as well as in bar and the inner rings which shows different different refrigerants saturation temperature 
For example, let's say at 5 bar pressure, RO04 a gas saturation temperature is 0 degree. For R134A, the saturation temperature is 21. And uh, for R410A at 5 bar pressure, it is minus 10 somewhere, minus 10, 11 somewhere. So this is the uh, compound pressure gauge. So you have to maintain in the operator depending on the refrigerant type that you are using and the requirement of your temperature. Let's say if you want to maintain uh, minus 18, minus 18 at the evaporator uh, or in your cold room using R404A gas. In that case, you have to maintain the evaporator pressure at about how much? Let's say 1 to 2.3 bar somewhere, 2.3 bar. So if you maintain the operator, uh, operator pressure at 2.3 bar, if you are using R404, then uh, the saturation temperature is minus 18. Then the expansion valve must set to meet the evaporator outlet is plus 5 degree. Plus 5 degree means minus 18 plus 5, that means minus 13, somewhere here. That is the way that you have to set up your expansion valve. I'll be discussing in detail how to set up the expansion valve. Okay. So this is the basics of the uh, expansion valve. And uh, let's move back to the superheated. What is superheat? So the exit of the operator and the operating saturation temperature, right? And uh, this is how it uh, happens in the operator. The saturated liquid enters and then it's become the saturated gas or vapor and then it becomes superheated gas. Right. Let's see how does the thermostatic expansion valve, right? To be familiarized, this is the basic construction. The evaporator is there. And this is the expansion valve. It consists of a diaphragm. And this diaphragm is uh, connected to the valve spindle. This valve uh, is working against a spring load. This spring tension can be adjusted by a adjusting screw. The refrigerant enters here through a strainer. So if the valve opens, the refrigerant can enter to the operator. This valve, how it opens, let's say if the temperature increase after the evaporator, then the liquid inside this thermal bulb, mostly it is same refrigerant. If the system used R404A, the expansion valve, uh, the bulb also consists of the same R404 gas, right? So as the temperature rises, the gas start to expand. So as the gas expand, the diaphragm, there will be force which act against the spring pressure. So we call it bulb pressure PB, act against the spring pressure PS. And this one starts to open. So then more refrigerant gas will enter into the evaporator and cooling down the evaporator. Right? And then again the bulb will cool down and close in the expansion valve. There is one thing that we have to know. There are three pressures in. What are those three pressures? Bulb pressure from this one and the spring pressure PS and the PE evaporator inlet pressure. This PE is evaporator inlet pressure. Evaporator inlet pressure. This is act as a negative feedback to stabilize the system. Otherwise, the control, uh, control action will be on off. To prevent that, we need to have a negative feedback that is taken care by this uh, applying the 
evaporate the inlet pressure against the diaphragm. Against the diaphragm. So by this way, this is act as a reduce a regular pressure regulating valve, pressure regulating valve, and it will maintain a constant pressure across the evaporator. So the purpose is efficiently drop the pressure and it acts as a variable orifice. And the problem, as I told you in the earlier case, as the pressure from here, this side pressure is very high, uh, this side pressure is low. So from high pressure region, when it escapes, the liquid molecules try to escape to the low pressure region, there will be some flash of take, take place. That is uh, loss of refrigerant effect. So to avoid that, undercooling is uh, need to be done just prior to entering the uh, expansion bag. This is uh, achieved by a heat exchanger or economizer which is placed between the condenser and the expansion fan. The problem is, let's say if your evaporator is too lengthy, then what happens? Definitely there will be a pressure drop across the evaporator because there will be friction uh, and many other factors influencing the flow. So whatever the inlet pressure to the evaporator will not maintain, this inlet pressure will not be equal to the outlet pressure because the evaporator length is too high. In that case, there will be pressure, uh, greater pressure difference. Right, let's say uh, externally equalized expansion valve. Sometimes you may heard or you have uh, seen this. The expansion valve provided with normal bulb, the sensing bulb, as well as some other small uh, tapping line comes to the expansion valve. Not like the previous case. You can find this kind of arrangement, especially with uh, the large evaporator coils. Large evaporator coils. As the operator length is greater, what happens? There will be uh, extra or uh, there will be a pressure drop across the evaporator. So let's say inlet pressure is P in, outlet pressure is P out, there will be a pressure drop. Then what happens? The saturation temperature get affected. If the saturation temperature get affected, what happens, gentlemen? Uh, as the saturation temperature get affected, the liquid, uh, what, whatever the end, the liquid enters into the evaporator will tends to completely get evaporated in the halfway of the evaporator. So the later part of the operator become ineffective. So to avoid that, what we have to do, we have to maintain the constant pressure across the evaporator. How it is achieved, this is your uh, expansion valve that we have discussed earlier, inlet, spring force, the valve. And in earlier case, the evaporator inlet was exposed to the diaphragm uh, the underside of the diaphragm. But here, the inlet of the operator is isolated from this barrier. It will not act out on the uh, diaphragm. So the negative feedback is not taken from the inlet side of the operator. Apart from that, that negative feedback is taken from the outlet of the operator just soon after the uh, sensing bulb. The sensing bulb is normally as the, the other normal expansion valve, it, is, uh, it expands and act the pressure, uh, the bulb pressure act, uh, act on the diaphragm, right? And the negative feedback is taken out from the exit of the evaporator, outlet of the operator, and it is acting on the underside of the uh, diaphragm. Now what happens, even now, let's say the due to temperature increment or the, in the room, then what happened? This valve get expanded and the valve starts to move open and the refrigerant starts to increase. In previous case, as the flow increases, it act as act on the diaphragm to close the uh, valve. But here, not in the case because the gas, it has to move. Uh, around the evaporator, the vapor it has to move around the operator and it has to reach the outlet, then only that pressure will act on the uh, diaphragm to 
uh, act as a negative uh, feedback. So, which means it's overcome uh, this pressure drop, which creates the pressure drop across the uh, evaporator, right? And uh, so, by using the external equalized T valve, that uh, the large pressure drop across the evaporator can be eliminated. Mm, yeah, so that is how that expansion. And now we, let's see how that expansion valve uh, is set. Once the expansion valve, normally expansion valves are factory set uh, devices. You don't want to touch this one, but once you uh, once you are going to replace that one, if you find uh, that system performance is not satisfactory level, then of course that you have to adjust. So how you are going to adjust? So before you are touching the system, you have to make sure that your system is uh, charged at the correct level. So no any air in the system and uh, all the system components are working fine. Right. And the refrigerant is subcooled at necessary value. And the system is running uh, for uh, some time period and uh, at a uh, moderate level load or its uh, normal load. And then you have to connect a contact uh, thermometer at the operator outlet because we have to measure the superheat temperature or the temperature at the operator outlet. As well as you have to measure the pressure at the operator. So you have to connect a gauge manifold or some kind of a pressure gauge to measure the uh, operator outlet or operator pressure. So then if you know the pressure of the operator, then you can uh, come to know what is the saturation temperature. How you going to find that? By using the compound pressure gauge as I explained earlier. If you have pressure, then you know what is the saturation temperature of that particular gas. So then, what is the value you need here? You have to adjust the expansion valve to meet that the evaporator outlet temperature should be greater, 5 degree greater than the saturation temperature of the uh, refrigerant at that pressure. So this is the principle that you are going to apply. So measure the temperature at the exit of the operator. Measure the pressure, measure the evaporator in pressure as close to the operator as possible. Work out evaporator temperature ET from a comparator, which means this is the compound gate that you from the compound gate that you can find the evaporation temperature. So the superheat value is T minus ET. So the T minus uh, ET value should be e, uh, the 5 degree. That is good for 5 degree for most of the system. You have to adjust the expansion valve until you get 5 degree difference between the saturation temperature and the operator outlet temperature. Right. So this is how it is. If the superheat is less than 5k, the valve needs to closing down. If the superheat gas is greater than 5k, then the valve needs to opening up. Wait a few minutes. Repeat step 1 to 5 until the superheat is 5k. 15 minutes after final adjustment that we carry out. So this is the correct procedure of setting of an expansion valve. Right. And the last part of, uh, part of the expansion valve is uh, the working principle of electronic expansion valve. The electronic expansion valve, it does not have this uh, sensing bulb because it sends the temperature separately at the operator outlet and this signal is processed to a microprocessor or PLC unit. From there, it calculates the uh, required uh, position of the expansion valve and electrical signal is given to a stepper motor arrangement. So this motor rotates, it consists of a gear mechanism and there is a spindle where you have the needle valve. The spindle moves up and down, the needle starts to move up and down. Uh, it looks like this. If this spindle start to spin, there will be a nut and thread arrangement. So the spindle will, uh, the valve will start to move up and down. This is how it works. Thank you.